Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm glad you're all able to join today. Um, first, let me just discuss a little bit about the format of the webinar. Um, thanks to the, the great turnout of people today, I think it would probably be easiest if we can save most of the questions uh, until the end. Um, if you have a pressing question that comes up during the talk, you can feel free to put it into that text field. And um, if I can find a good place to answer that question, I will. Um, I haven't challenged, challenged my skills of uh, reading and talking at the same time, so we'll see how well that works. But uh, um, I think it will be easiest to do questions at the end. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, Metabolon's platform, a little bit of an explanation of what we do, um, why we do it, uh, and addressing that in terms of the, a lot of the challenges associated with metabolomics analysis. Uh, so the Metabolon uh, platform is a non-targeted platform, meaning uh, the platform is designed to be able to detect and monitor as many small molecules as possible by introducing as little bias into the analytical method as possible. Uh, the sort of the, alter the alternative approach is what we call a targeted method. This is where one would hone one's method pretty dramatically uh, to be able to detect smaller subclasses of molecules. Now, the reason why we've decided to try to use a non-targeted approach is because um, since the end goal is to be able to detect the biologic response to some sort of perturbation, whether it be a drug treatment or a cancer cell versus a healthy cell, uh, we want to be able to make sure that we have the opportunity to detect any biological response. And if we limit ourselves to uh, a small subclass of molecules, we might miss it. So from our end of things, it's really important that we develop an analytical method that can uh, detect as many of these biological compounds as possible. Now, um, the current slide is your traditional biochemical pathways chart. Um, and the blue dots on here are, uh, are some of the compounds that we detect on the platform currently. And the, really the take home message is, is here is that we've tried to cover as much of this pathway chart as possible and putting in as, as many, uh, even as many molecules as possible into individual pathways to get that coverage. The, uh, excuse me, let me get a search of water real quick. Now the unfortunate problem with, um, it's associated with metabolomics is that the, the chemical diversity of the small molecules in this pathway or in this chart are pretty extreme. Um, so unfortunately, technology today doesn't allow us to have one analytical method that will be able to de detect the, the breadth of chemicals in this, uh, in this pathway. And for that reason, most of the field has adopted uh, a means of diversifying one's methods to be able to uh, expand the number of compounds that you can detect. Um, and this is very much what we've done with our platform. So to give you an idea, every sample that comes in, we run using three different analytical methods. We use two LCMS methods and one GCMS method. Now the reason why we do this is, again, we need to be able to diversify our methods so that we can detect more compounds. It's really as simple as that. Um, the GC and the LCMS are very complementary techniques. Um, the GC can, example, uh, for example, do a great job with um, sugars. It can separate individually all the various hexoses, whereas the LC struggles with these because they all collude in the same area. So the GC is uh, very good at that. The GC can also analyze compounds like cholesterol, uh, be, uh, which is a, it doesn't have any polar groups for the LCMS to be able to ionize and detect. So they're very complementary techniques, and using them both together, we're able to expand the coverage of the metabolon. metabolon. Um, the LCMS is further split into two separate analyses. Uh, we have one optimized, one injection optimized for molecules that prefer to form positive ions, so the bases, cholines, carnitines, these types of molecules. These are run in acidic conditions. We also have a um, separate injection which is optimized for small molecules that prefer to form uh, basic or that prefer to form negative ions, so basic conditions, and these are your acids, sulfates, phosphates, sugars, these types of molecules. Um, so we used to have the 
process where we would, would run a single injection, but then switch the polarity of the mass spectrometer. This is another very standard approach. And what we've found since dividing it into two separate injections is that we can actually get better coverage by two separate injections than by having one and switching the polarity. Now, the theory behind that is simply that the solvent conditions so heavily dictate uh, which, whether an ion can form an ion or not, that you know, even when you're monitoring negative ions in your solvent conditions, you might not be able to form that negative ion. So now that we've switched to two separate injections, we've actually been able to detect a wider range of molecules. Now, we were able to, to do some of this improvement because uh, we updated our LC technology. Um, at the beginning of this year, we switched from a conventional HPLC method to a UHPLC method. And this is an example of the two um, total ion chromatograms from a sample of human plasma. Um, now, the analytical method was actually designed so that we could both take advantage of a reduction in runtime that the UHPLC allows you to have, but also get an improvement in peak capacity. Um, so the method was designed such that we would get a little bit of extra time. And this extra time is what allowed us to then implement two injections. Now, just to give you a feeling for what simply updating your LC technology can do in terms of increasing the coverage of metabolites, um, when, we in, when we increased uh, or when we switched to the UHPLC, we actually doubled our number of named compounds. Now, to be fair, this is, this is a switch to the UHPLC, but also implementing that positive and negative optimized injections on the LC. But just with that change, we doubled the number of named compounds. Now, part of this is simply because of the really improved chromatographic resolution that you get out of the UHPLC. You can see that on the HPLC, um, isoleucine and leucine were completely unresolved into one very large peak here. But on the U